What would happen if you got a really basic bike from a department store, a store like Walmart, and then through a series of affordable, carefully chosen upgrades, it was made to be as good as a mountain bike that costs a lot more. That's what we've been trying to do here with this Kent Truvail. Since the summer, we've been mixing and matching different parts, doing experiments on the Kent Travail. Ooh, that was a hard one. To try and get that perfect combination of parts. And today, we're gonna do the final upgrades and go over the costs, compare it to other bikes that you could buy for the same price, and decide whether this was really worth doing. So before we get to those final upgrades, what did we do so far? So first of all, we replaced the crank set and bottom bracket to this one. Got a wider stance, it's more robust, and we have a better chain ring. It's gonna help keep the chain on, help the bike perform smoother. That was $55, and honestly, I think it was one of the biggest upgrades we gave the bike. Next upgrade, hydraulic disc brakes. That's huge, and I would say it's pretty essential if you wanna do any real downhill on this bike. Now, we installed these Zoom brakes off of Amazon, and they have been performing flawlessly. But you can get a set of Shimano brakes for even cheaper, and so that is what I would officially spec this bike with if I were to make the recommendation. We also switched out the rear derailleur for one with a clutch. This was only 60 something dollars, and it puts a little resistance on the derailleur cage so that when you're going over bumps, the chain doesn't fly off the bike. The bike had reasonably good chain retention before I put this on, and so it's a little lower on the priority scale, but definitely worth it. Then there's the bolt baloney fork. We put a super cheap $130 air fork on this bike in the hopes that it would make it ride smoother, and it kind of did, but only for one ride. This fork degrades really quickly, and according to a bunch of people in the comments, these break. The fork that came on the bike was really basic and really heavy, but it was pretty reliable, and so if you want to save money, I would just keep that on the bike. Today, we're going to upgrade this. So now we gotta move the crown race to the other fork, just this ring on the bottom, and the tool we use to do that is a screwdriver. <laughs> nice. So I was originally just planning on upgrading the front tire, but when I got into the rim, I realized it looks like we could go tubeless with this. So I'm covering all the holes with Gorilla Tape, and we're gonna do a tubeless conversion on this double-walled rim. Absolutely holds air and everything. One more upgrade. This has been irking me since day one, is the routing of the derailleur cable. The cables look messy because they routed the derailleur cable on the same side of the bike as the derailleur. So you have this tight bend here, and it's gonna look way better when I do what I'm about to do. This is the final form of the Kent Travail. So let's talk a little bit about why I chose the upgrades I did. So first of all, the most recent upgrade, I upgraded the front tire. Putting a knobbier tire on the front of the bike makes it a little bit more capable in loose turns. The other upgrade we did today was the fork, an air fork. Now, why did I switch that out? Well, first of all, we save a whole bunch of weight by going with an air fork. Now, this is gonna give us some other benefits. First of all, it takes air, and so we can adjust this according to the weight of the 
lighter. But the other great thing about this fork is that it has rebound damping, so we can control how fast the fork returns to its normal position. It can help the bike stay planted, help it track better, and overall, give you a better ride. But I also wanna talk about an upgrade that I didn't do, and that is a dropper seat post. You've seen on my other mountain bikes, I can raise or lower the seat post with the flick of a button up at the handlebars. That helps you get the seat out of the way when you have to do something technical or hit a jump without getting off the bike and adjusting it manually. I think a dropper post would be a really good upgrade for this bike, except it's got a really weird size seat tube and I can't find one that fits the bike. And so I did all the upgrades that I think are reasonable to do. Let me get it out on the trail, take it for a little whip, and we're gonna talk about how much this all costed. Okay, so the crank set came with a new bottom bracket and a single speed chain ring. That was $55.99 and has proved to be one of the best upgrades on the bike. Hydraulic disc brakes. I would recommend the Shimano ones that I was able to find for $55. Next, the MicroShift Advent Clutch Derailleur. $62.02 for this. Now the next upgrade we did was an SR Suntour XCR. This was $190. Now finally, and I don't think you have to do this, but I did this, is I replaced the front tire with a knobbier one. And it was only 40 bucks, plus we upgraded to tubeless. You just need some sealant and valve stems, that'll only cost you 20 bucks. I'd say it's well worth it because now the bike has way better traction and a better ride. That brings our total for parts to $424.99, more than the bike, which was $398. All told, this Kent Travail costs $822.99. And so we have taken a $398 Walmart bike and turned it into an $822 bike. Was that smart? All right, so we're gonna start with Trek and we are going to find the entryest level, entry levelist. We're gonna find something cheap. Okay, so the bike that is closest to the Kent Travail is the Marlin 6 Gen 2 for $849. So for all intents and purposes, this is the same price. You are getting a one by drivetrain with Dior shifting, and it does appear to have a clutch. Looks like the same crank set that came with the Kent Travail. You already have the cable routing on the left. You do have hydraulic disc brakes. That's a major one. Not as good of a fork as we have. This is the coil fork that pretty much came on the bike, and ours has an air fork that is vastly superior to this one. Okay, now in the looks department, the Trek is many, many times better looking. It's not even in the same category. The Trek looks amazing. So let's move on to the Grand Canyon 5. That is a $900 bike, pretty close. Okay, you're getting Dior 12 speed on this. You have a much better drivetrain. It's got more range. It looks like you get the same coil fork that came with the Kent Travail. You do get hydraulic disc brakes. It honestly looks like for $50 more, the Canyon's a better bike than the Trek because you're getting that drivetrain with more range and you're getting a better front chain ring, better crank set, but you still don't have as good of a fork as we do on the Kent Travail. You know, that's the give and take. If anybody has something that's gonna beat our Kent Travail, it's gonna be Polygon. Okay, $799 hardtail. This is right in our price range. I mean, it's got a two by drivetrain. Looks like the same fork that Kent Travail came with. This is honestly not even as good a value as the Trek or the Canyon. Okay, so we have our answer. For certain things, this is a really good deal. You're getting good brakes, you're getting a really good fork, you're getting pretty much everything you need to really go mountain biking. But would I recommend doing what we did? Would I recommend over getting, let's say, a Trek Roscoe, going down to your local Walmart and getting a Kent Travail ordering all the parts I did and performing these upgrades? And the answer is no, definitely don't do that. First of all, we're pretty close to the price of those other bikes. They're basically a fork upgrade away from having all the features that Kent Travail does while being better in a lot of ways. For starters, 
You can choose the size on any of those bikes. You can only get this as a large. I haven't seen any other sizes. Then there are little things like the saddle. All those bikes come with better saddles than this thing. It was like basically a part when we bought it. If you get a bike from a bike shop or even direct to consumer, it's gonna be assembled better than this because it was assembled by animals. And so to me, where the Kent Travail becomes a decent value is if you don't perform a lot of upgrades on it and just don't expect as much from it as you would a real mountain bike. The reason I don't consider department store bikes real mountain bikes is because they're not designed to be serviced. Even if you buy a bike at REI, or Dick Sporting Goods. They have a bike shop there with tools. They are expecting to take care of that bike for you. They are expecting to make more money off of you through service. Department stores don't have a service department. And so any money they put into the bike to make it more serviceable or to make it last longer is just money they left on the table. I would say the Kent Travail is a little bit of an exception because it does have pretty normal parts on it. But as you can see, you can't change out the front chain ring without replacing the crankset. You can't remove the kickstand without a cutoff wheel. When you get a bike at a bike shop or even direct to consumer, they are trying to establish a long-term relationship with you. And so as a bicycling advocate, as a mountain biker, as somebody who's trying to give good advice, I can't say that this is a better value than just buying a real mountain bike. Now with all of that being said, we ended up with a pretty good bike here. I am definitely going to use it, and I have been using it as a loaner bike because I don't own a size large bike. If I'm taking my daughter out on the Mack ride and grandpa wants to come along, this is the perfect bike. And so I personally had a lot of fun upgrading the Kent Travail. I did learn a thing or two about what upgrades actually make the biggest difference. I hope you learned something as well, and if not, I hope you at least found this whole sick, twisted experiment entertaining. So that's the end of the Kent Travail series. This is the Kent Travail's final form. We'll be doing experiments on it and using it here and there, but I'll be keeping an eye out in the department stores to see if there's anything else worth checking out. And thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.